waiting for it to come on. Hey, folks, Breakaway Homesteader. Uh, we are finally getting back together. I got Brad from Full Spectrum Survival on the line with me. Evening, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. And uh, sorry, I was just turning my sound off to no the problem. video that was oh, playing. Oh, yeah, it doubles. It echoes up and it makes it It does. It does. <laughs> and I did not set that up properly. But uh, um, we're here tonight to close out a series. And uh, originally, it was this was supposed to be one show. And we were going to talk about uh, home security and how to better secure your house from uh, intruders and other other people that might think about getting into your house so uh we quickly realized that this show should have been uh a series and so that's what we did so the first show we went over protocol and answering your door mm -hmm. second the second one we did uh door security and then this one we're gonna go over window security uh and so i'm gonna set this uh uh this presentation up and Brad's going to give, give you guys an update on what's going on. Okay. So I wanted to cover some current events, things that are going on in the world around us today. Uh, a couple of things of note is that uh, researchers with Northwestern university are discussing household water insecurity. We see in our own research uh, that Kelly and I have performed and some of the scientific community has performed that water insecurity is the future. Uh, that is given, of course, that we don't experience crisis events before that. We will have a water crisis, and the wars of our world's future will be fought around water security. In some ways, wars and uh, manipulation has already taken place in Asia because of that. Uh, so these researchers led a scale development within the Household Water and Security Experiences uh, Research Coordination Network, in which they looked at 40, uh, the data of 40 different scientists from four continents. Uh, the professor of anthropology and global health at the Weinberg College of Arts found that uh, using biocultural approach found that we will experience this type of insecurity here in the United States. Uh, moving on, as we experience pestilence, maybe not against humans, but as we experience plagues of beetles, plagues of uh, something that we have here in the uh, in the east is pine beetles. It's just ravaging our pine trees here. I'm sure a lot of people have different pests that are ravaging their local, uh, you know, their local plants and wildlife. Elk by the University of Wyoming are avoiding these areas. And so we're seeing a sort of cascading waterfall of issues because of natural events that are taking place. And a lot of researchers are saying that what we'll see in the future, as we look back 10 years, as we look back 20 years, is you'll see this sort of case zero. And that case zero might be uh, climate variations. It might be a virus among a population. And then slowly, it'll spread from that point and just get worse and worse until it becomes a global event. Uh, and other research, brain computer interfaces are becoming a real thing. Researchers with the University of Kansas are using artificial intelligence, machine learning, and a couple of other tools to make the brain interface with computers. Choosing the right, quote, brain-computer interface maximizes reliability of the neural control signal and minimizes fatigue and frustration. So researchers are putting to use our brains, connecting them with machines. I think we all know that that has a pretty dangerous future ahead of us. And back to you, Breakaway. I'm interested in tonight's show, Window Glass and Security, because like you said, we've discussed two different parts of home security, the door, right. uh, and we discussed uh, last week, last week we did the door, right? Last or week we did weeks the ago. door. Uh, okay. Well, actually, yeah, it was two weeks ago we did the door, and, uh, and the week before that we did... Uh, protocols protocols and you know it's it's tough because the further and further we go away from the protocols the more and more you're going to want to go back to that first section just to refresh on on why this is all all these puzzle pieces need to come together and really i would suggest that people once this series is done that they do watch all three it's a good idea or they go back to the other two and watch those uh just because it's uh it's very important so now we are on windows now and windows is a tough tough subject to cover simply because it is what it is and we said last time the description is what the subject is right it, it's glass and uh the only way to thing the only way to make glass uh, uh not breakable 
I mean, you really can't make glass not breakable. Uh, only way to secure your windows is to add things to it. Right. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to go over the different types of windows that are out there. Then we're going to talk about the different glass and then some gadgets that we can add to that glass to make sure that if anybody tries to enter the enter the I was going to say the facility, but enter the home. Mm -hmm through the window that they get deterred or delayed in some way where it's not going to make it worth their time to continue into the house uh, because it's going to cause them uh, issues. That's that, right. And, um, you yeah, know, I think also that we, our community, the prepared, the homestead, the off gridders, the aware, uh, we're all pretty security minded, but we forget that essentially we live in very vulnerable structures. Unless your retreat location or your home that you're living in is a fully concrete uh, building able to be locked down, it is very vulnerable. Uh, Patrick and I, we both have vulnerabilities. Everybody does. Uh, right. Even if you are able to lock things down, a vulnerability might be smoking you out. There's so many different things. So like you said, each step that we can take is that much more... Uh, that much, that many more levels that a person has to go through to make you vulnerable. Right. So let me get this set up here real quick. I lost my, my note pages here. Okay. We're set. And so let's back up here. So this is the front slide and this is PowerPoint. And I hear people say death by PowerPoint all the time. But I promise <laughs> you when I do a PowerPoint, it's usually no more than 30 slides and there's a video in this as well. So, uh, it'll, it'll give you the examples. Like I said, we're going to go through windows first, uh, and then the types of glass and then the things you could do to the glass and then gadgets. So, types of windows and their weak spots and so this is talking about not the physical window itself but the frame of the window or the style of the window and so uh what this window is right here is called a fixed window and i don't know if you can see can you see it brad i can yes okay these are fixed windows and win fixed windows are simply a pane of glass that's stuck into a frame that's uh, secured to the building frame. Right. And there's no opening it. There's no closing it. It's simply for looking in and out of. And uh, you'll see schools and other buildings have have these fixed win windows. Now, the next type is called a pivot window. And it's called a pivot window because it pivots on two uh, hinges, two pivot hinges on either side. It could be on the, uh, the left or the right side or the top or the bottom. You can right. see both variants right there. And, of course, the, uh, the weak points of that window are going to be those pivot hinges. Right. And this, this window is more secure or most secure when it's in its closed position because you have two frames on either side that are actually opposite of each other that it closes on. And so securing it in a closed position makes it the most secure. <clears throat> so the next type is called a double hung. This is actually the oldest uh, type of window there is out there. Uh, back in the days, in the, in the uh, late 1800s, they created this window. It's on the right-hand side. And this is a double hung window. You can see it was very high because the ceilings were very high back in the day. Right. And the point of that was to lower the top window down a few inches and then open the bottom window up a few inches, like on the left there. And what that does is allows hot air out and allows cold air to come in. Right. It was and a smart so, design. Exactly. It was, it was very brilliant, whoever came up with this. And they're in a sliding uh, rail system. And the old ones even had uh, assisting weights that were inside the wall that would help them uh, mm -hmm. go up and down. And so that's called a double hung. Next one's a single hung. It's kind of like double double hung, but the bottom portion is the only portion that can open and close. And then this is called a louvered window. Um, you'd find these on old mobile homes or old uh, uh, travel trailers, and what it's like a shutter type. And there's there's really no way to go through the window, uh, but hey through Patrick, the yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I was just checking out the main screen here, and I don't see the uh, presentation moving over. I only see it here on Hangouts. I don't see it on the screen. Can anyone who's watching tell me if you can see the presentation on the screen? I'd hope so. Uh, Chip says, someone asked about those on a call in a radio show locally yeah. two weekends ago. Yeah, they are. It's showing on, it's showing on Hangouts. I mean, it's you showing on. It's, it's, okay. it's going through. 
Okay. Yeah. For some reason, the only thing I see is our screens, uh, our channel logos back and forth. Okay. They right. see it on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Sorry no, for the introduction. Uh, interruption. It's, it's okay. I'd rather everybody have it than not. You know what I mean? So let me get my notes page back up. So uh, louver windows are like a movable shutter window that allows the most airflow when it opens. Uh, mostly not swing open as they allow some security. Uh, but the only way to prevent someone from getting through this type of window is to have security guards, security bars across it. Uh, this is like, this is what you would see in Florida. Yes, right. Am I, am I correct? Yeah, and actually, my grandmother had those at her house in Sarasota. So you're absolutely I've, correct. I've I've been around this country a lot, and I've never <laughs> seen any other place but Florida that uses this window so much. <laughs> but they're cool. It's a cool design. You know, it's old school, mm -hmm. and it's a great concept. But this was more for airflow and for areas that you know back in the day didn't have air conditioning, so they just you know allowed the sea breeze to go through the house. Right, and it was. It was smart, but I tell you, it's not that not that smart to have. True. So the next type is, of course, the glass sliding type. If you were to take a double hung window, put it on its side, this is a sliding glass window. It's the same thing. Um, uh, again, most secure position in, in this window is the closed position. Added security by adding additional pressure locks to the rails. And uh, we'll show it at the end. Uh, but there are these little uh, screwed screw knobs that go into the rails of these windows that you could just shut and it'll only allow the window open so far, or you could shut it completely with that. Next. All right. So now we're going to talk about types of glass and uh, uh, these are the type of glass that you'll find inside your, your, uh, your windows and of course glass is always breakable yeah right uh, it's glass glass now there's other things you can add or get that's like glass that that can be better for you but we'll go over those things as well okay and again i'm kind of rushing through this actually but uh no problem so if anyone has any questions just yeah. put them out and i'll watch them please anytime anybody has any questions uh put them out there brad will, will grab those and we'll talk talk about them yep. um so this is called annealed glass. Um, so you got your regular glass. It's called float glass. This glass is poured poured into a fr into a frame or a form to make just regular glass. It's just molten glass into a into a form and it cools on its own. Annealed glass is what most most windows uh, are used to be made of at that time. And what annealed glass is, is it's it's heated, it's poured into the form, and then it's cooled quickly uh, to give it strength. Right. And it's probably about twice as strong as regular float glass. And for and anyone wondering what annealing is, annealing is just a, a slow cooling. Uh, right. The slow cooling helps to remove stress and makes it stronger. Exactly. Uh, it mends the cracks on the inside of the glass as it cools mm -hmm. down and makes it stronger so there's a little video here of what it looks like as it's getting hit by a hammer and uh you can see how when it's hit that it just fractures yeah it's done and, uh, and uh, that is not annealed glass mm -hmm. but uh the next type is uh tempered glass and this is the new glass of the future so this is the glass that everybody sees nowadays that that just so happens to lately been spontane spontaneously exploding on the first yes first right not. but there's been several news shows on because every news shows copies other news news agencies mm -hmm. uh stories and they were talking about annealed glass and and there's a range in temperature that the annealed glass can take or the tempered glass can take and then uh if there's a drastic change to it it'll just bust but right. when it busts it busts into these little tiny fragments uh and you can see there when the hammer hit the hit the window it didn't break and that's because tempered glass is actually four times stronger than annealed glass mm -hmm. and that's because of the way it's made um so when it's made it's it's made specifically for the side size it's going to be made in and then it's it's heated 
uh, just like anneal glass, but then uh, it's cool when it's cooled. They they, they use uh, uh, blasts of cold air on the outside of the uh, the frame or the outer portion of the glass, and what that does is it cools the outer portion quicker, which causes it to stretch in the middle, hmm. and which and it makes the tension of the glass a lot higher, which is why it's four times stronger than anneal glass. Okay. But the biggest issue with anneal glass, or not anneal glass, but tempered glass, is, of course, the tiny fragments. Um, I don't know if yeah, you've ever had go everywhere. tempered glass go. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy how. So you see this guy right here. He's got a uh, hammer, and all he's going to do is just hit the corner of the glass. And... Just, just by fracturing one part, the whole thing is it's destroyed. Right. And with anneal glass, it's not the, not the same. It'll either crack away or chip uh, on that side. Mm -hmm. but. So the next type of glass we're going to talk about is called laminate glass. And this is the type of glass that's inside your vehicle. It should be anyway. If, you're, if your car is up to spec, it's got laminated glass on the windshield. So that's if anything hits your windshield, it won't go through it. At least that's what you don't want it to do. Right. So there's a small uh, layer of polyvinyl or uh, uh, vinyl in, in be sandwiched in between uh, two glass uh, panes, and it's kind of glued into place. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you how this guy right here is trying to get into the door and this is a laminated glass door and as he's hacking away at the bottom you can see he's really trying in that one spot mm -hmm. um the, the by the looks of the way the the spread pattern of that it's a uh looks like an annealed glass because mm -hmm. it's spidering it's not cracking all the whole thing but as he continues to hit that bottom portion you can see the laminate uh, come yeah, out. It comes out, right? Kind of like and a skin. It's a skin, exactly what it is in between the two panes. And uh, yeah, you can see it right there, uh, how it's just bowing out. And that's the laminate. And so when it, the, the, the latest and greatest, this is not the latest and greatest, but the wave of the future was laminate glass for mm -hmm. window security. Yeah, because uh, it, it gives you a chance to uh, to react. You know, if exactly. you hear the glass being pounded upon, you hear the break, you still have a chance to react rather than immediate entry. Yeah, it took that guy several uh, several uh, minutes just to get to where he was at. He still couldn't mm -hmm. get through the door at that point. So the next type of glass we're going to talk about is not actually glass at all. We're going to talk about plastics and polycarbonates. Um, Specifically polycarbonates, you can see here a bank teller window. Uh, and what they'll do, so if they have any issues, is there's a lip on that window. Is they'll put a plate up that goes into that lip and it will secure that uh, that station. So if anything happens. So polycarbonates can be bulletproof. And uh, it's, it's a certain type of polymer inside the polycarbonate that's different from acrylics or plastics because plastics can break and everything like that right. but polycarbonates tend to be more flexible mm -hmm. um so i got a definition here polycarbonate plastics are naturally transparent um uh, thermoplastic although they are made of commercially available uh, although although they are made commercially available in a variety of colors uh, the raw materials allow for the internal transmission of light nearly the same as glass itself. Polycarbonate polymers are used to produce a variety of materials and are particularly useful in the impact resistant and or transparency uh, product requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, polycarbonate is commonly used for plastic lenses and eyewear in medical devices, automotive components, protective gear that's your eyeglasses your safety glasses right and get this greenhouses the greenhouses the plastic and greenhouses are made of polycarbonate well, let's tell um, you what that that immediately brings to mind is if you have access to that or you see an abandoned greenhouse after a disaster post-disaster event uh, especially a long duration emergency you have access to something that you can use against your windows against your window frames to provide a let another layer of security at your home exactly um cds digital discs and exterior lighting fixtures polycarbonate is also very good heat resistant and can and can be combined with flame retardant materials without significant uh degradation to the clarity of the uh quote unquote glass um 
And so polycarbonate is actually the, and I'm going to push play on this video here, uh, is is the uh, thing to have if you're going to be to be making new windows or want something that's great. Now I wonder uh, what their uh, temperature, what's their temperature range? Do they? I I don't have a temperature range on it. Okay. But um, there's a demonstration a guy was doing because I've been looking through these videos, uh, and he put a torch to it for about. 30 seconds and it did, it did not go through nice okay um so uh those are the types of glasses that uh that i found out there and that i got information on uh i don't think there's anything else really out there as far as glass goes uh but of all those we, we, would you what what kind of glass do you have in your place do you know i do i have uh tempered glass here uh but i am in the process of trying to source the polycarbonate glass. Yeah. Uh, I hope that I'm able to find something to fit my needs, but you know, because we bought the tiny home as sort of an empty shell, it right. has uh, unusual sized frame. So I think I'm going to have to go and get them custom made, which is kind of a stinker. Um, yeah. And it, it has kind of driven me to the idea of something that we'll I'm sure get down to later on in the road. And that's uh, the window film plus a roll down, roll down right. shutter. Yeah. Uh, well, I look. Well, look, and this is what I've seen in videos. Don't trust me on this source, but the way polycarbonates are made, they're not meant to break. And so, uh, during construction, when people use polycarbonate, they end up using like a bandsaw to uh, to cut the cut the window panes. And so, if you can come, if you can source a large piece, you should be able to cut that with a saw. Oh, nice, okay. Sort. But I'm sure it would stink and might melt a little bit or something yeah right but, uh, uh, they use a regular saw now um those were the windows next thing we're going to talk about is the security add-ons that you can add to windows to make them stronger right we touched a little bit on this last week because you could have windows in your doors but uh uh and talked about uh spoke about putting laminate or security laminate onto those windows of the doors. And so that's what we're going to talk about now is the, is the film uh, that you can place on the window. And originally it was made by 3M. This was a while back, a long, long time back. Uh, I would say uh, late 80s. And so since then, the patent's been released, and you can get it almost anywhere now. You can get it on eBay mm -hmm. if you wanted to. <clears throat> so... um I think like with most things, you're going to find a certain accountability with 3M. Uh, so make sure that if you do choose a, a route that's better for your pocketbook, that there's some accountability by that company. I know that uh, you know we've had experience with an Israeli company. I wish I could remember their name. I'll have to find it. That's a real good uh, window film company. But I've also seen experiences with non 3M or with off brand and you're able to get right through it. And a lot of those cases I think were when people didn't follow the procedure to uh, also place the film on the window frame, uh, you know, because otherwise, as I'm sure uh, you have notes for you, if you get a little piece started, if you get a corner, you can just peel the whole thing out. All right. Right. It's just like uh, window film inside your car. If it's uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, the darkening stuff, uh, yeah, tent, right. tinted, tinted windows. You can pull the tint right off mm -hmm. uh, if if you hit it right, or it'll strip right. off, or whatnot. But it's put on the same way as window tint. It's mm -hmm. a window film, and what it does is it adheres to the window with the liquid and creates a uh, a secure bond to the window. Right. Um, but you're talking about if you use tempered glass and window film, if the window if the tempered glass is not placed. Uh, into the frame of of that or uh, or if the uh, the, fr the film if the film is not placed to the frame with the window itself mm -hmm. once you hit it it's going to come out like one big soggy plate that's right come right out i do have a video on that and we'll get to that in a second okay perfect but if you look at uh, look at it on the right this is how how 3m sees their security window film they took tempered glass they put so much amount of money in it and they put it on a street in new york city and you can go on YouTube and check this. It's a hilarious uh, video, but people, it says on the bottom, go ahead and try to break into this, and nobody could. Oh, that's awesome. And that was real money. So let's talk about the film itself. Safety and security films are used 
uh, where it is a potential for injury of broken glass. Originally, this was meant for tornado prone areas, hurricane prone areas, and areas that have issues like uh, blast issues, like you're talking about Israel uh, right. a while back. They, they use this on all their windows because they know if there's an explosion, which happens quite often there, mm -hmm. that the number one killer of all, all explosions is in, indoors is the glass that flies from that right. explosion the percussion of that explosion right so uh these films can be applied to toughened annealed or laminated glass they are available in various thicknesses from 100 micrometers to um or four four millimeter uh four mil uh to 21 mils or 525 mic micrometers thick that's pretty thick mm -hmm. the film thickness is selected for the level of protection desired and dimensions of the glass pane Manufacturers recommend 100 micrometer films. That's the two ply right. uh, for glass up to three uh, millimeters, so an eight, eighth of an inch thick and 175 micrometer film for glass. That's one quarter of an inch thick. Hmm. And they're talking about more the quarter of an inch thick is more of the commercial type buildings because they're going to have thicker windows. Um, so these films could be applied for security, security applications uh, where a delay of force entry is desired. The performance of these films is affected by adhesive bond strength, thickness of the polyester, uh, quality of the application, and the window structure and frame. And so it doesn't say there at the bottom on my notes, it doesn't say this will prevent people from coming in. It's, That's right. It's saying it's going to delay people from coming in. Right. So no, what I did here, I yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, okay. I have a couple of things about the 3M laminate. Um, you ha you're gaining protection through forced entry. Uh, no matter what, like Patrick said, you are going to slow a person's attempt to get into your house. Uh, the selection of window film solutions for your property, of course, is going to be dependent on your needs. Um, if you are interested in just securing the most used form of entry, which is your door uh, and any windows associated with that, then you will use an appropriate film for that. Uh, there are different types of film that can provide things like uh, bomb blast and blast mitigation. Uh, these are usually layers of security film that are uh, applied uh, on top of each other. Sometimes they'll even put a layer of security film a layer of glass and then another layer of security film because there's some uh, there's some doubling effect that takes place when you do that. Mostly though, you're going to be protecting from impact. Um, if a person, if they're just interested in a predatory uh, attack based on uh, seeing that you're not home uh, or looking for something in particular, if they're looking to go hawk something for money, for drugs on the street, they're going to use something very uh, rudimentary to try to get into your house. They're going to use a hammer, a screwdriver, uh, things that uh, they a don't. Brick. Yeah, a brick, exactly. A brick they might pick up from your own yard. And that's what really you're going to find protection from with this sort of uh, laminate. Now, I will say that the, in my experience, the installation cost is usually around 30% 30, 30 of the laminate. Right. Um, it can be done. You can do it yourself. Uh, it's not that hard. And especially if you're like me and you don't really uh, mind a bubble or two in an odd position, that's not going to really break the deal for me. Um, you know, you can do it yourself. Just watch a lot of videos and be prepared that you might have to replace the whole window and scrap that, uh, that entire piece of laminate. Um, there are different options, uh, including polyester. There's some that will inhibit uh, UV. The kind that we use from that Israeli company, they it would actually uh, stop the light at night from seeing through. Uh, so, you know, it, normally you're going to see whatever is brighter. Uh, so if it's dark inside during the day and it's bright outside, it's easy to see out, but you get a reflection on the opposite side if you're trying to look in without getting real close. This actually reversed that. And so uh, if it was dark outside, you would just see that reflection of the darkness and not... <laughs> inside of the establishment. So it's like a um, mirrored pane. That's right, yeah. But but otherwise, it was perfectly clear. Hmm. Uh, a lot of them come with warranties. You'll get warranties of 10 years, 25 years. Uh, and a lot of them will even have guarantees, you know, that if you 
uh, did happen to get a home invasion that the person was able to get right through it, there's a certain amount of insurance coverage uh, that can help you. So those are just some of the different thoughts to go over. That's very interesting. And so with the window film, um, I ended up, you know, doing a little comparison uh, with with videos here uh, on anneal glass versus tempered glass with with window films on it. And so the first one's anneal glass, and anneal glass spiders out when it gets hit or, or broken. And uh, I'm gonna play this video here, and you can see this lady. Um, so she takes a whack at this window, which is covered in 3M film, okay. and she hits it once. And it spiders out, just like the one the the picture on the left. Right. So there's your spider hit. If that was temper glass, it would have shattered the whole window. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're taking a look at it here. This guy says, "No, you didn't hit it hard enough. Let me get that bat from you." Right. And smacks it five more times. And he puts on his safety glasses. That's what I like. Bam, bam, bam. Right. <laughs> he thinks he's getting through. So what's going on here is. Every time he hits that glass, he uh, um, the adhesion stays intact with the laminate. Now that's that's the good thing. That's the best part about uh, the anneal glass. If it were um, tempered glass and it was not in, and it was not pasted into the frame on that glass, it would have just fallen out. It would have folded over and fallen out. Right. And I'll show you exactly what I mean here in a sec. Um, so this is uh, tempered glass as well. He had just shot the glass with a AR uh, four or five times, and he's attempting to go through this glass. And you'll see how quickly, as soon as you hit the glass at the right spot, those little shards will tear into that laminate and then cut it down as if it were canvas. Right. Canvas is a very strong material, but its biggest, biggest weakness is a hole. That's true. As soon as you hit that hole, it'll tear all the way down uh, very easily. So run that video here. So he's hitting it with the butt of the of the gun. And then he finds a hole. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he finds that hole. Yeah, you can peel it like an orange. He'll he'll just rip it right down. Mm -hmm. And so this is, you know, good protection. He's taking his time and he is uh He's trying to figure out how to get through the door. So finally he switches, and then he hits that hole. As soon as he hits that hole, it rips away. Uh, three percenter says, so is anneal greater than tempered? Um, it can be. And I think if you're applying a film, it definitely is. It, you know, what do you think, Patrick? I believe so. Anneal is dangerous because it's the it's you know it's the glass you see in the horror movies where people grab a grab a shard of broken glass and stab the bad guy with it in the eye or something like that. And uh, but if it's if it's covered in a, in a laminate like this, it's not going to be as dangerous as that. Right. But you see, he got through pretty quick, and it just peeled away as soon as he got a hole into that tempered glass. So, no, it's so a open door. Exactly. So next thing, so that that was just a little comparison between annealed and tempered glass. Next thing we're going to talk about are add-ons to the window. So we're at the point now where, where we all should realize that glass is not impenetrable. Right. Uh, it's just it's it's not. If you want to be able to see out your window, or if you want a window at all, it's going to be able to be broken into. Mm -hmm regardless of what type of glass or anything like that. Uh, unless you, you know, you bump it up and, and spend that extra money on that polycarbonate. Right. Uh, so what can you do? What can you add onto your window to uh, make it more secure? Uh, Patrick, can I interrupt you real quick? Yeah, go ahead. There is actually a polycarbonate security shield that uh, people can purchase that gets mounted on top of existing window and glass doors. The name brand of one type is called bullet shield, ballistic paneling. Uh, what they do is place a thin polycarbonate uh, security shield right on top of your existing window. It makes it bulletproof. Uh, huh. This is being used right now in schools, government buildings, courthouses, places that if you, uh, you know, the building was already in place and they didn't have the budget to redo all of the windows with bulletproof windows, they right. were able to contract to have this put in. That's uh, nice. The, yeah, the bullet resistant version uh, is called Defense Light, L I T E. Uh, it's been tested to uh, provide a UL 752 ballistic rating, which means it'll prevent 
uh, breaches of 9 millimeter, 44 Magnum, and AR-15 bullets, uh, just to name a few of similar uh, impact. So good, good protection there. I wonder it how much sure it costs. Uh, so that's another option if you uh, if you're thinking about still wanting to see out, but you don't want to replace your entire window. Nice. So continuing on with the outside or the uh, secure, security add-ons you could do your windows. Of course, this is going to suck because these these are accordion shutters. This is probably the quickest, simplest way to protect your windows mm -hmm. or protect from intrusion. Uh, it sucks because you can't see out of it. Right. But you can. Uh, but these accordion shutters, these are these are old versions of what uh, what I'm talking about here. You can see this dude pulling an accordion across this uh, this door here, the sliding glass door. Mm -hmm. And uh, nowadays, these accordion shutters are made of that polycarbonate um, plastics. And so you can see right through it. The bars will still be there, but you'll be able to see through it. Nice. And so this shuts just like the old school uh, plastic doors in a, in a, in a Winnebago trailer from 1973. And uh, it locks. And this is probably the quickest and probably most inexpensive way to, to secure your window at this level. Um, oh, what's their expense level? Do you know? The expense level. So give you an example, that sliding glass door there will cost about between 500 and 700 bucks. Okay. That's pretty inexpensive for that level of security. Sure is, yeah. So you know what was what was that movie? They made two versions of it where they had one night a week, one night a year where you know everything was legal. The Purge, yeah. The Purge. That's what it was. If I was in the Purge, this is what I'd have on my house. Mm, on the inside too. <laughs> on the on the inside as well. <laughs> Yep, on the inside as well, um, because this would be something I can afford, mm -hmm. something that I'm only going to be using once a year. It folds out, it compacts away, and then so this is also good for like hurricanes and, right. or bad weather or tornadoes or whatnot, and it's going to keep things from going through your window. So next we got rolling shutters. Uh, we've all seen these rolling shutters before. Uh, most people in uh, coastal states will use these shutters for hurricane protection. And it's a more expensive version of a security shutter. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it works. I'm just saying uh, when I lived in Europe, they had these. Can you hear me still? Yeah, sure can. Okay, sorry. Uh, I didn't. I, it went blank. Um, when I lived in Europe, they had these security shutters. The biggest difference between these security shutters that they sell in the United States and the ones in Europe is that rolling ball bar box. The the the, the box the that top? okay yeah, the, the box that these uh, metal slats roll up into was on the inside of the house. Hmm. Now, if I was just to, and this is just my observation. Everything is done on the outside of the house with these windows. Mm -hmm. If I were to just drill a hole in the middle of that upper box uh, and and uh, get a nice good yank from a, a, a pickup truck or something like that. From yeah, that you're going to pull it out. It would probably come off the wall. Mm -hmm. And so there are versions. Of, if you were to go with, as far as to get something like that, you can actually buy windows now that have this option in it. It's right oh, at the awesome. top of the window frame, and it'll be on the inside of the house. So as long as that secure that uh, window frame is secured to the house, it's not going to be pulled out or pulled off. Nice. But most of these are used for it. It is a deterrent, uh, but most of these are used for hurricane and and uh, tornado protection. Right. So the 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 never fails always always wins version of of window protection and that's going to be security bars. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever lived in a place where you had to have security bars on your window. You know, it, the funniest thing when I was growing up, uh we lived in a uh where my parents still live, a very nice neighborhood. Um never any crime experience that I can recall in my entire adolescence. One neighbor had security bars on his window and he was a postal worker and everyone made fun of him behind his back for having security bars. And he was a nice guy. You know, he would talk to us, uh, us kids and kind of, you know, let us ask questions and stuff. Uh, now growing up, looking at that, he was the only smart one of the entire neighborhood. Right. He was probably, you know, he was way ahead of his time. Right. And thinking in his, in his mindset, uh, thinking, Hey, this could happen any moment. 
That's of course, right. That was back in the day, but still, it could have happened in that mm -hmm. moment. Um, I remember when I was a kid. This is this is freaking hilarious. My my parents they had they had separated on on occasion. I guess just to get at, get back at each other or to to realize, hey, they are, they really were meant for each other because right. they would separate, get back together, separate, get back together, so on and so forth. There's my a mom, pattern. Yeah, my mom would stomp off, and we we'd literally move out the next day. And of course, the only place she could afford at the time was like a mobile home park or something okay. like that. Right. So we'd go into a rental mobile home. And this is really saying the taste of, of, of what it was. So I, I remember specifically the mobile home had bars on the windows. Okay. So that tells me the kind of place we were living at the time. Of course, I'm like nine, ten ish around that time. I didn't care. Yeah, right. Whatnot. But uh, that's what I remember. Well, the good thing about bars on the windows, like Chip said, uh, he thinks they're outlawed in Florida because of fire hazard. And I imagine they could be, um, if not outlawed, they at least became unpopular because of that. And I'm sure that's true as well, unless there was some sort of internal locking mechanism to keep them in place. But as you know, if you, if you provide an easy way to get in and out of it or to open it up, a criminal is going to find that as well. But the great thing about bars is that the integrity of your window doesn't matter. It gets right. broken. That doesn't matter. Uh, and yeah. like you said earlier, unless you're pulling it off with a uh, pickup truck, you're going to be secure. Exactly. But that, that is the biggest thing about it is nowadays code requires to have an egress option. Mm -hmm. And what it is, it's a security bar that's on the inside that apparently is not reachable by people reaching right. in, uh, that people can push and it'll go, uh, it'll, it'll egress outwards. Nice. And so people can get out. But, uh, yeah, security bars, uh, it's the thing. If something happens, it is the thing to be having if you want us to look out your window. Mm -hmm. Now, here is something new and it's up and coming. It's called security mesh. Have you heard about this? I have seen it. Yeah, it's, it's neat looking stuff. This is a stainless steel mesh, and you can see it's interlocked on the right-hand side, and that's how it's made. It's kind of made like screen, mm -hmm. and then it's it, if you look through it, it looks like a uh, uh, thicker screen. And you can see through it just fine. You can see it there on the left that that door right there has a little uh, visible, right? That and uh, but this mess mesh is practically impenetrable. Uh, and I say practically, nothing's impenetrable. But this is this is a cool option. I'm gonna press play on this video here. It shows uh, it shows how open things can be in your home. Mm -hmm. But this is this is made by a specific company, and everything has to be tailor made to your home. But if you get that done, there's no worrying past that point. Right. I don't know if this stuff is bulletproof. I doubt it would be, but um, they That's install it for you, and and then everything's installed on on the on the frame, and it's practically impenetrable. What were you saying? Um, just imagine putting a polycarbonate film on top of that. You'd be set. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> so you see how she uh, lifted up the handle and the door locked. My kid's not going to know how to get through that door. I have an autistic son. He's not going to get through that door, even though it's open. Right. Of course, again, he may because he's a genius. Yeah, but, he's going to uh, figure it out. Right? <laughs> you, you saw how fast this guy gets through this door. Mm -hmm. He cut the screen with a knife, and he got through the door. And now they show what happens with the security mesh. And this guy comes up. I'm a robber. I'm going to steal your stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love I love these demonstration videos. So he's trying to cut it open with a, a straight blade. It's not okay. working because it's stainless steel. And the the door frames they offer have a three uh, three bolt system inside. So it uh, looks like from the angle of this video that you lose probably around thirty percent of through and through visibility just from the corners where the mesh is going to add up to each other. Right. Okay. So, but awesome stuff, my goodness. Yeah, no, I think that stuff is nice because it's also if there's a hurricane or if there's a tornado or anything like that, the stuff's not going to come through your your uh, your window. That's right. But the thing about that is it, it's updated to code, so it also has an egress bar on the inside. Hmm. Because they can't reach inside, that that bar could be like literally inches from the exit, and, and nobody's going to get there. Well. Now my thing is what happens if somebody gets a you know a stainless steel rod and bends it the proper way to yeah, pull right. that bar back. But 
if they're going into that detail, you got bigger issues to worry about. Yeah, there's always going to be a way, no matter what you do. So next, we're going to talk about deterrence on Windows and what you can do to your Windows, your current Windows, to uh, help protect yourself and your stuff. You know, real quick, I think that it's easy for people to get overwhelmed um, because you kind of have to adopt this all or nothing mindset. Right. And so there's always something more to think about because that's what we do as humans. We problem solve and we're looking mm -hmm. for that. Well, how's the criminal going to do it? And this goes all the way to the end to a complete bunkered safe room. Well, right. oxygen has to get in there somehow. And so that's a vulnerability. And that person might have spent a half a million dollars building their safe room and it's still vulnerable. Right. So, you know, don't let the all or nothing uh, mentality get you and just know that just like the top of this slide says, each one of these is a deterrent and a slowing down, giving you time to react. Exactly. I'll give you an example right here. We got the, the window glazing or frosting of the window. You can see the guy behind the window on the right-hand side. He cannot see you. You can't see him. Oh, you can see him, but you only see a silhouette. Right. The first thing a robber is going to do when he walks up to your house is look in your windows. Sure. And if he can see right through your windows, he's going to know what he's going to see, and he's going to want that TV. He's going to want that new uh DVD set or whatever, or yeah, that new PS4. No one's sitting in the room, all exactly, that. whatnot. But if you can't see it, you've deterred his his sight. The only thing that's going to make him want to get inside there more is the fact that he doesn't know what's inside. And so anything could be inside from there. You can have a fake dog barking or, or a real dog barking, but he still won't be able to see what's going on inside the house. So just doing this alone to your windows or any windows on your bottom floors would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, I don't do it, but you know, maybe it's a good idea for you. I live out in the country, and there are variants in uh, being urban or or in a met metropolitan area. Sure. And uh, and so, if you have a house where you can spit out the window and you hit the neighbor's house, this is the type of place you'd want to glaze That's your right. glass yeah. or, or frost your glass. And and heed to these things that you can do to add on to them because you're going to be you're going to be the statistics and uh you know when they do statistics it's normally from a metropolitan area mm -hmm. that's not, right not from uh not from the middle of the uh, country right uh, country boy house because you know halfway up the driveway they got bullets flying at them mm -hmm. but uh let's keep going here a uh, properly placed blinds and so this is a big issue that most people have is people are like, well, people can't see through my house. I got blinds up. Yeah, you have blinds up. But you're not properly placing them in the right position. One, is it wide enough to where it gets to all the gaps? And then is it long enough to go all the way down to the bottom of the frame? But the, the bad part is you see both sides here, the, the, the flaps to the blinds are in a downward position. Right. Now, if you're sitting in a chair and I was standing behind you, what am I doing to the back of your head? I'm looking down on you. That's right. Yeah. It's the peeping Tom blind. Exactly. Uh, I know. can see your head because right. I'm looking down at you. Now, if you replace a window with blinds on it in between you and me, and I'm still looking down at your head and those blinds are at a downward angle, guess what I can see? Yeah. Your big head. That's big right. Mouth. And you can't see out. Exactly. And so... um you're actually blocking the inside from seeing out and mm -hmm. you're letting the outside see in. So this is something you do right away. Check your blinds. If you have blinds, look at them. If they're pointing down, just do the little squirrely screw thing with yeah, a flip, little thing. Yeah. Six minutes later, you'll have them flipped up. And flip them up. Uh, and uh, you might realize you need to clean your blinds after that. But uh, uh, once you flip them up, there's no way anybody from the outside can look in. That's a right. that's that's a free fix right there. That's right. That's that's the quickest and easiest thing you can do. So, I and so uh, Chip Signal sent me an email last time we did this show. Are you still there? Yep, I'm here. And Chip's okay. in the in the chat. Yep, and he sent an email to both of us. I think I'm not sure, uh, but he said uh, he said, "Hey, talk about putting deterrents in front of the windows." And so it's a smart idea to have um, plants in place to where they're not going to be able to get to your window to look into it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you have to have plants on top of your windows where you can't see outside and all you see is this big plant. 
it's just a thorny bush in front of the window so nobody uh can get uh get to the window itself be a peeping tom right. most most fathers come up with this idea because they don't want peeping toms looking in on their daughters right. so on and so forth uh if you look on the right there that's that's a bush called hawthorn and it is a very very thorny hedge bush but still pretty it's very beautiful and um uh, hawthorn was mainly used for cattle deterrent. They would make natural fences with hawthorn so cattle would stay in their fields. Nice. And it'll keep uh, deter it'll deter people from wanting to to be around your uh, your we'll window because right. it'll it'll get you. It'll get you for sure. Now these were the locks I was talking about. I was talking about sliding glass window. Um, the, uh, the little lock on the right hand side has a lip inside of it. You mm -hmm. just put it on that sliding glass lip. You twist it down to where it's 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 uh, no longer turnable, and that that window will only open to that point, or you can close it all the way up. Uh, and then the lock on the left, you get these on Amazon. Um, uh, it's a little pin lock that pulls out, and then it pushes back in. It goes into the frame of the window to keep it from being opened up. And of course, okay. that one has has a key lock in it. And uh, so three percenter had a good uh, option for people with sliding glass doors. And this was my grandparents growing up. Uh, they had a piece of wood that yep. would sit in between uh, the sliding glass door. But three percenter pointed out that if you take a thin piece of metal, like a, even something like a opened up aluminum can and you cut it open, you might be able to get it inside to push out that piece of wood. So while it's a, another layer, it's not uh, a end all be all. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen this before or done this before, uh, but if you have a, a single hung or do double hung window, because it's the most common type of window out there, uh, you have these these things here. So the two frames, you have the frame on the top and the frame on the bottom. When they're shut, the two frames, the frame on the top, the bottom of that frame is set in line with the top of the bottom frame. And so... And I, we used to do this all the time. We would have uh, a drill. We would drill a hole in the corner of the frame, just like right. on the right hand side there. And we'd place a heavy set nail through that, which would push into the in through both frames and it would secure it into place. Mm -hmm. This is a commercial version of that. And it's just a, it's called a safety pin. It comes off, it goes through the frame, and it secures that window. Nice. <laughs> Excuse me. No, no problem. Now, deterrence these are some gadgets that you can get uh the gadget on the left is called a doberman you can get a six pack on amazon i think it's for like 30 36 bucks or something like that the, is that the one you were telling me about the barking no no this is not you would okay. think so i watched the video and i'm like all right we got a barking something no this uh this is just like a security add-on that you can get when you peel the sticker off the back it's got a little warning symbol on it saying okay. hey uh protected by doberman oh, nice. you know okay. and so it sticks to the window and it's a vibration detector if the if the window vibrates it'll set off a little 100 decibel alarm on the window nice. that's great and uh so for 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 you know roughly six bucks a piece you could put one of those on each window and they are maintained by battery buttons but um and you know honestly when we had um, a security system in place, the window vibration was a huge part of that system. And that, I think, brought up the price of the security system considerably. I think it was uh, at least 800 to $1,500 to vibrate, secure all of the windows. Right. And, uh, you know, so to have that option that any of us can use at home, that's great. Yeah. And one thing I found out is most, most companies now will have uh, uh, that vibration system as a magnet in between the, the window frame and the, and the actual outside of the frame. So if that moves, it'll, it'll work out because the big problem with that was these batteries would run out on these, okay. these yeah. vibrators. So uh, that sounded awkward, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but now is the one on the right, the same thing. Is it a, uh, is it a right is vibration? A, it's a cutaway, and so that's placed. It's a, it's a magnet cutaway. Oh yeah, like the dollar store ones. Yeah. Okay, I you got it. This has a dollar store. This is more high end one, mm -hmm. but there's a connection between the two held by an electric extra electromagnetic field. And when that field's broken, the alarm goes off. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. No, no problem. And then, 
and you can use that for uh you can use it on your doors that type of uh oh yeah breakage model you can use it on your windows you know so many different things oh yeah and they work great and the funny thing is is i got a, i got a house i got a second house uh my old house that i lived in that i rent out when uh, the house was uh not didn't have a tenant i would put these on the outside of the door mm -hmm. because uh, it wouldn't stick on the inside they were they were awkwardly off to where they wouldn't alarm and so what I would do is I would stick these on the outside of the door and I would stick uh, uh, super glue on the on the on off switch so it just stuck on the on side. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so when you open the door the alarm would sound so on right. but that's what I do with that. I mean it's a buck, right? <laughs> so next up, this is something that everybody else can do if they can't afford a good system, is fake deterrence. Mm -hmm. You could put placards on your windows each one of them excuse me i'm gonna cough here real quick yeah no problem and those really do work if you look at uh places like dollar general uh, a lot of mom and pop shops they'll have a couple of real systems covering the essential parts of the uh establishment like the cash register maybe the front door uh, but then they'll have fake ones and the large uh the major security companies will even give false uh, cameras and they're exact exactly the same model as the originals because as soon as a person sees that they're being recorded they no longer care whether one of them is real and the other ones aren't right so this is the deterrent here let's say you put the sticker on your window and you put this fake camera up in the corner first they're gonna do first thing they're gonna do is look at that sticker as soon as they see that sticker with the camera on it, next thing they do is look for the camera right so you got this little fake camera with an LED on it they're going to look at that and they're going to see a red light and they're, and they're, they're not going to know whether it's fake or not. They're okay. questioning themselves. Is this fake or not? But if it's not fake, I mean, they're not going to go up to the camera and try to rip it out because they've already been recorded. If it, if it were a real camera and it would take too much time to rip it out to find out if it was a fake camera. That's right. So yeah. this is the best deterrent, the cheapest one. You, as a matter of fact, you get these on Amazon. The stickers are like, uh, you can get like 20 of them for like, a Ten bucks. Of box, yeah. Right. And then the um the fake cameras, they're like three to five bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. Even even the ones with little LED lights. Mm -hmm. I would stick to the dome types because dome types are the e are the are the hardest to figure out that they're fake. Because the fake little, you know, arm arm cameras, you could tell if they're fake or not. Yeah, right. They look like plastic toys. Exactly. Yeah, so, uh, Chip says even if you have hidden cameras, visible cameras are important. Uh, if you can only afford one or the other, go with visible. Make it easier for bad guys uh, to rob your neighbor than you. Very true. Exactly. So that is pretty much it. Uh, that's what I've got for window deterrent. And so we went over the glass, what type right. of glasses there are out there, what type of window frames there are out there, and what kind of adages you can add to your windows for deterrent uh slow you know slowing down uh well, intruders that, you know i was just replying to christy h uh in the chat and talking about how windows are such an important part to uh a pleasant lifestyle a, a pleasant living experience because normally in a day-to-day -day basis you want to be able to just look outside and you want to be able to see uh, the beauty of your environment you want to be able to look at the trees see the wind moving through it see what the skies look like for the weather and it's been proven through research that humans who don't have the ability to uh, kind of look outside and take that in feel closed off they feel uh, less than those who are able to so it's so important to have that but it's also the biggest uh, secondary vulnerability in your entire house so finding options and as i think chip pointed out uh that he said this was the pinnacle of the series finding options to add to your windows is really important and unfortunately both when we we hit it first here on your channel with protocols then mm -hmm. we hit doors on my channel and now we're into windows i i am questioning why it's a a, a less sought after solution and i think it's a less sought after solution because it takes initiative and it takes work 
Right. Uh, you know, it's not just something that you can go purchase. Sure, if you're just rolling in money, you can say, okay, well, this month I'm going to have them replace all the windows with polycarbonate <laughs> right. in the house and money's, you know, in the in the uh, words of the Jurassic Park guy, you know, um, what does he say? Money is no option or all right, all right. Uh, we spare it. No expense. Yeah. Spare no expense. Yeah. <laughs> and so some people of course can be like that, but for most of us, we have to take this all into consideration and, and actually get out there and do these things. So I think that this is visible proof, Patrick and everybody watching of why, how security remains a threat to your preparedness plans, because oh, yeah. most people just don't want to get that initiative started. Yeah, well, I've got, you know, let's say you got, you know, two years worth of backup stock food uh, in, you know, in a garage or something like that. And there's one window. That's that window is your biggest vulnerability. That's right. You spent all that money for nothing when they come and steal your stuff. And you don't think about that. The people don't think about that. So my word of advice for anybody out there that's listening, and I know there's only like 15 people in my chat room right now, <laughs> which is nothing compared to you, Brad. But uh, well, hey, but that's what I mean. You know, look at how important this topic is, right? And how many people that we have seen over and over again where they have said, "Oh, well, this house got broken into. Yeah, uh, this house that I know got broken into." It's obviously that that this is in the minds of a reality for people, but it's so hard to get action on it. Yeah. So the first step I would say, if you're just now thinking about window security and, and are going to make action towards it, don't have a whole lot of money to start, is find the room with the least amount of windows inside your house and start okay. with that window. And once you secure that window, you know that for sure, for a fact that that, that room is secure. That's a smart idea. Then move to the next room. So, and then... Build your plan around that. If there's an intruder in the house or whatnot or something like that, or there's a hurricane or something like that, that's going to be your most secure room. Make that your safety room. That's right. <clears throat> of course, the safest room you can have in a house is a, is a, is a room with no windows. That's right, and uh, a secure door, right. In the, in the opposite of that effect, when you're inside that space, you cannot escape that space either. That's true. So maybe it is safer to have a secure window, windowed space uh, in, in, in a, for a, a, a safe space. That's right. Because if it's going to take them some time to get into that window, you should have been already prepared to the point to where you could defend yourself that's in a, some that, way or another. Yeah. I think that that's something that needs to be discussed too, is what happens next. Exactly. So maybe, maybe next week, Patrick, if you're up to it, uh, will handle a little bit of what happens next. Uh, right. You deterred them. You slowed them down. Now, what do you do? And Home so I think there's some other options there uh, yeah. that, you know, that we can kind of go over that anybody can get into regardless of what country they live in or what laws they may, may uh, be subjected to. So maybe let's do that. Let's do what happens next and make it a four part of the series. It sounds good. Sounds okay. Good I like me. that. So I don't know if you were keeping up with the chat. I'm just looking at it now. Yeah, if you, uh, anyone has any questions, feel free to throw them in there. Um, MG Ibarra, welcome. Uh, most Jason of my windows, nice. Deborah says, are four to six feet off the ground. I'm going to start at, uh, at the ones that are on ground level. That's smart. Yeah. And Katie says, I'm beginning to hate YouTube. It's <laughs> <laughs> It is bad. It is getting bad. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not getting bad. It's getting ridiculous. Uh, of course, you know what I saw real. today? What's uh, that? A major personality, not in our genre, but this personality does uh, piano lessons. Uh, and they have something like 800,000 subscribers. YouTube demonetized their channel. Do you want to know the reason? Why? Too much repetitive videos. Seriously? For repetitive videos. So now it's just gotten to the point where if they just don't like what you're talking about, let's just throw some lawyer speak at a reason to to knock them down and and make change. Yeah, well, I, I don't mean to rain on your parade uh, because I know you do, do uh, Patreon. Right. But Patreon is now starting to do the same thing. You know, I, I'm questioning that because I haven't seen it firsthand. I've heard lots of horror stories. Right. Right. Uh, but I'm, I'm questioning it. I do want to see some proof of that 
uh, right. just from anybody who has experienced it. Because, you know, in, in a lot of ways, if a person is uh, calling for harm for an elected official or right. something like that and they get knocked down, well, okay, I'm, I'm not yeah. going to say that that was a ruining of their freedom of speech. You know, they that threatened was somebody's a riot. Life. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's coming down to the fact that these channels, <clears throat> not channels, but these, these avenues of uh, getting the info out here, YouTube, Patreon, mm -hmm. uh, you got uh, uh, other stuff out there, Vimeo, stuff like that. The gist of it is, it's where the money's at. That's right. It's the credit card companies and the money lenders or transfer firms that transfer one place to another. So when you hit send or purchase, it takes that money out and puts it in this spot, mm -hmm. then sends it to that bank. It's the basis of those companies that say, hey, if you don't change it to the way we want it and our, our company values, even though it has nothing to do with YouTube. Right. Uh, then we're going to stop using. We're, we're going to stop letting you use our programs, our software. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> so it's the money lenders that are actually holding these programs hostage, where they have to come out and say and look like the bad guy and go, "Sorry, guys, I have to demonetize you because you said this, this, and this." Because Visa says they don't like green colored speckled frogs. Right. Yeah. You know? Or you have too many videos of frogs. <laughs> so I would say don't jump ahead when you see stuff like that happening take a minute to think about what's behind that and and that's to say for almost everything these days because something's always going on there's always something behind it all right so patrick i did a video today a uh, secondary video i saw that and i wanted to watch it before the show came on and i was like man i know it's gonna be good so a lot of people i've gotten a lot of comments on it um let me hit it real quick uh so the video was talking about the u.s economy uh, and how we're already in a stage of the collapse of that economy. And, you know, we read all these numbers and we see it all day. It's propagandized towards us. It's pushed in front of us how, uh, you know, things are better than ever. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to follow those figures and look at them and go, okay, well, I do see how this figure looks better than it did two years ago. I, mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. But what we don't realize is that is the figures of the wealthy becoming wealthier right because whether the corporation caterpillar made their ends meet or not has no basis on the average person that is figureheads gaining more money or losing more money because no matter what it is a it's it it's an employer's job to pay you as little as possible to mm -hmm. do as mo the most amount of work they can get you to do or that anyone else will do yep and so it's kind of a uh near corrupt enterprise from the beginning in that way. And so the video uh, was around the statistics of the National Low Income Housing Coalition. They did a recent report that showed people need to work over two and a half full-time jobs at the national minimum wage to have a one-bedroom apartment in most of the United States of America. That's true. And you want to know why the job rates are going up? It's because people are working multiple jobs. That's right. So great jobs. Have, no one's ever had this many jobs because they have to work at the grocery store and the fast food place. And they're doing inventory at night at Walmart. Yep. And they're getting four hours of sleep. They're eating junk food that causes mm -hmm. cancer. And then they get cancer and, uh, you know, they keep them alive barely long enough to get back to that flow again. That's and right. It's a, it's a repeat. It's a rinse, lather, repeat. And so they found that people had to work over 90 hours a week just to have a meager one-bedroom apartment in most of the United States. There were only 20 counties across the entire country of America that you were able to work only two minimum wage jobs, not two right. and a half, just two, to make your living expenses. And that's assuming that 30% of your living wage goes to housing while the rest goes to non-essential or non-housing related expenses like your food, things like yeah. that. So a 99 hour work week, 52 weeks a year, just to pay your rent. We are in the middle of an economic crisis. Absolutely. And I'll give you, I'll tell you what I do. So I told you I had a second house. Uh, I do have a tenant in that house and that tenant is a seasonal worker. Currently he's not making that much. He's actually unemployed right now because of the season. And of course, spring's getting up. He's getting back in the habit of things. He's a right. mason. He's a brick mason. Nice. And so um, he's he's a valuable person. He actually works uh, at the volunteer fire department 
closest to my house here. That's awesome. And um, he got kicked off his, his property, and so he needed a place to go. I happen to have that house open, but he had come up to me probably about six months ago. He's been in the house about a year. He said, hat in hand, said, sorry, sir, I can't pay my rent. So okay. you, know what? you keep your your utilities up to date. You pay your you pay your utilities and make sure they're good first and foremost. Right. So I don't, I don't want to hear anything from anybody going your your tenant is not paying your bills or anything like that. Right. But he came in hat in hand, and uh, I said, uh, and and the, the the second thing that came out of his mouth was, "What can I do for you to to um, kind of make things help. up?" Right. Make things up. Is there anything I could do around the house? Anything like that? And I said, yeah. I said, let's start clearing land. And we started clearing land together. Right. And he is, uh, and, and I'm paying him a $25 an hour rate. And he usually makes up rent pretty quick. The The mortgage on the house is not very high at all. Right. It's in a location to where, uh, uh, you know, mortgages out in the middle of North Carolina are not that expensive. Yeah, right. They're affordable. Uh, so, I mean, going into it as a rental property, we already make the income to cover that cap in case anything happens. If there's no tenant in it at all, it's covered. So knowing that it's covered, we're getting this extra help and we're getting things done. That's right. Yeah. And, the government and I, doesn't offer that. That's for sure. And the government, government doesn't say, hey, oh, okay, you, you work on a farm. Okay, let's get a percentage going. And they, they used to do that back in the day. People used That's to right. pay taxes with, with livestock. Right. And they, they don't do that these days. They and, don't, you know, yeah. the entire system is so broken and so near crisis that we have a social stigma on welfare to the individual, but we have no problem welfaring the farmers uh, so that we can continue to get our rice at seventeen dollars a fifty pound bag, right? If the economic, uh, if and the that economy, guy's on food stamps. That's right. He is on government food yeah. stamps. Sure, they're not paying him food every month or food money, but they're p subsidizing his tractor. They're subsidizing, uh, you know, his trailers. Everything that he does to bring that food to market at that price, and so we have this stigma, but we don't look at the fact that the entire system is broken and it's working on the, uh, the slave labor, the servitude labor of every single person who isn't at the top of their position. And so I think that we're going to see a big hiccup, a big crisis event here soon, because we look at things like Iran, uh, uh, the Iranian nuclear deal and how Russia together with current United States allies said, that's okay. We're going to go around the U.S. sanctions or we're going to uh, make a new payment window that has right. nothing to do with the United States dollars. Guys, if that catches on, if people say we don't, as, as countries say, we no longer need the USD, guess how much the USD means to the world? It means absolutely nothing. About the value of paper it's printed on. That's right. And because we're not backed on precious metals, because we have no gold standard, it is real. that promise to pay becomes absolutely null and void. And we run into a very serious situation. And that's when you'll see conflict arise because uh, the guy standing at the top, and that's America for so long, does not want to be the guy in the middle or the guy at the bottom. And so what do you do? You bring, uh, you know, you command and conquer, and then you bring your allies against a real foe and they have to either get in line with you or get on the other side of the, of the uh, line in the sand. And that's a dangerous situation. And I think it's something that we're going to see here in the next couple of years. And unfortunately we're going to have to raise our children through that. And that's a bit, my biggest fear is not being prepared for my child. And I want my child to be prepared for that. Uh, Chip Signal said he wants to clear something up. He mentioned on last week or the last live chat we did on Full Spectrum. He said a friend makes two hundred dollars a week scrapping metal. He chatted with him. It was two hundred dollars every two weeks. Hey, that's okay. That you know, that's still a a decent amount of extra money somebody can make. And I had somebody on today's video say, uh, you know, I don't have any money. Um, you know, what can I do? And he named off all of these reasons. And I was so thankful to see a, a huge number of people from the community came forward and replied to his question right away, including some really viable options like uh, different churches and organizations 
won't just feed you that day. They'll give you, uh, you know, they'll give canned foods and things like that that you can do to start building up your food stores. Right. And so, you know, there's so many different things. I think now is the time that we have to all start preparing. And I'm sorry if you, if you, if you're a minimum income and you can, you can go to a food bank and, and get a decent amount of food for a small price. That's right. That's a, that's a good way. Like you, like Brad said, to build up those stores. That's right. Um, I don't know. I like I I like to read books. I like to read prepper fiction. Yeah, uh, me too. it's it's something fun that I like to read because I like the variations of different people's minds on possibilities of what can happen. A book that I just read, <clears throat> and I'll suggest it to anybody who wants to get more into this. is very realistic. <clears throat> it's called the American Exit Strategy: The Economic Collapse Chronicles, and it's by Mark Goodwin. I highly recommend it. I listen to audiobooks back and forth to work. Uh, I'm not a big reader, but I do listen to these books. Do have a subscription to Audible. Okay. And uh, that would be one really good book to uh, to hear about because it's exactly what we're talking about. It's going the exact steps that you were talking about the way the real economy is going to collapse. That's right. And, you know, I talked to some people and Mark Goodwin, that's interesting. He used to run the Pe Prepper Recon podcast uh, back in the day, years and years ago. And I was on his show a couple of times. We did some back and forth stuff. He was a good guy and intelligent. So I'm glad to see his book series is, uh, you know, the exact same way. Oh, the, um, he's still, I mean, he, the thing about Mark Goodwin is not only does he have these books and I mean, I just finished, it's a three series book, uh, three, three book series. I finished all three books, but he also has a website dedicated to that and it kind of tracks what's going on in the economy. Nice. And then it gives resources on, you know, what you can do to prepare for those things. Nice. And he gave his, his, his darn honest opinion on how things are going to go down and it seems to be pretty accurate but it's it's fiction it's not real right but it's to say hey this is what i see and i'm going to make a story up about it that's right and that's something you know i i think that fictional settings have a great way and just like movies tv shows uh set in the setting of preparedness they're great ways for us to use critical thinking and you see an event and naturally your mind as a human being starts to find solutions there. And sometimes it will be the same solution that the characters take. And sometimes it'll be a different solution that you'll go, Oh no, I would have done this. And so I think those are really awesome ways to move forward in preparedness while still, uh, you know, finding entertainment. Yeah, I agree. And so I think that's it. I think we're at a crossroads right now to stop and, and uh, prepare ourselves for our next week's show. That's awesome. So next week we will handle what happens next after uh, the intruder gets in. What are your options and what can you do? And I think that'll be strong because that won't. Uh, the same tools that you'll use aren't just for home invasion. You'll be able to use those during any confrontation. Exactly. Well, guys, thank you so much for having me, Patrick. It was great to be in here and, and be in the chat room. And I agree with what Chip said. This was the best one in the series. And a lot of people, Christy, uh, Rick, a couple of other people, they were making plans to make changes to their windows. So I think that's awesome. Nice. Well, I also encourage them to, like I said, go back to the other two videos in the series, do a little recap on them, and then, and then follow through with next week's show. Nice. Hey, right. uh, Patrick, would you mind if, uh, if giving me the permission to rip the uh, audio after, download the audio, and I'll put it up for everybody on Patreon so that they can uh, Not take a, problem. a listen? Okay. Nope, take it. And, and that's the thing about this channel, and it has been since, since the beginning. We're here to teach you guys and help you guys be, uh, to be more aware of what's going on around you and, and have an action plan in right. case something does happen. What I'd like to do is maybe we'll rip all three and yeah. gosh, that's going to be what, like four and a half hours worth of audio. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you and I next week, we'll talk about that and, and just make, I'll put it up on a free hosting site and, okay. uh, and then we'll just give it, uh, give the audio link away so that people can just sit in there. You know, if right. they have four hours to spend or taking a long drive, they might find some use in it. Right. I could also post that on my, my own website. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, that's breakawayhomesteader.us. 
And so, all right, folks. Well, we appreciate you guys coming out. Brad, thank you for coming on tonight. Thank really you. appreciate your assistance in these. And, of course, uh, uh, your help is always is always golden. Your advice is always golden. Glad so, to be here. All right, folks. You guys have a good one. We're going to be live next week on his channel next Wednesday, correct? Yes, so Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. All right, Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, and I will post up a link on my, my channel as well for his channel for that show. All right, we're going to sign off. Have a good one. Good night.